Good Thursday, family and friends. This is our message coming out from Our Lady of the Valley and Holy Cross Churches here in Wayne on this brisk winter day with the possibility of more snow tomorrow, Friday. But at this point, I'd rather snow than the rain. You know, there were at least two days in the past couple of weeks that we couldn't even get over to Holy Cross Church because of the flooding in the Mountain View section. So as much as I hate snow, at this point, I'd rather snow than rain. But it would have been nice if we had could have made through three winters of no snow, but obviously that wasn't to be. I guess we were lucky to have at least two winters of no snow. But today, January 18th, we begin the week of prayer for Christian unity, which will, is observed each year from January 18th through the 25th. And those dates were chosen specifically, and I'll get into some of the history in a minute, because in our former liturgical calendar, January 18th was one of the feasts in honor of St. Peter. It was called the, the Feast of the Confession of Peter. And January 25th is the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. And those dates were chosen because of those two uh, feast days. But in the renewal of the, after the Second Vatican Council, we combined, there were like seven or eight feasts in honor of St. Peter on the calendar, and they combined them all into one, which is now celebrated on February 22nd, the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter. So, but we still maintain the 18th through the 25th as the week of prayer for Christian unity. The, this year's theme is, you shall love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself which is taken from the Gospel of Luke with the great commandment which Jesus proclaimed, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. But the week of prayer for Christian unity began in 1908, and it was begun by Father Paul Watson, who was a priest of the Episcopal Church and the founder of what the community we know today as the Gray Moor Franciscans but it was originally an Episcopal order of Franciscans. You know, sometimes we think that we in the Catholic Church were the only ones with religious communities of men and women, but most of the other faith traditions also have religious communities. They're like Episcopal Franciscans, there are Episcopal Dominicans, there are Episcopal Benedictines and so forth. But Father Paul Watson began this week of prayer for Christian unity as a way for to see when is it gonna be possible to get all the Christian communities back to one. And as I said, it was an Episcopal community of Franciscans, but eventually that entire community, along with Father Watson, entered into the Roman Catholic Church, made profession of faith and became Roman Catholic. And now the technical name of the Grey Moor Franciscans is actually the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. And it's actually a play on words in a way. If you take the word atonement and divide it up differently, it comes out to be at one -ment. And the purpose of that community is to work for the reunification of all the Christian churches around the world. And there was also a um, Franciscan uh, Sisters of the Atonement, which was founded by a friend of his, uh, Sister Lorena White. And they worked together to see what it is can we do to get our Christian communities back together. You know, there are so many things that we hold in common with the other faith traditions, some of our beliefs, some of our creed, and there are some things that obviously we hold differently. And so the idea of the week of prayer for Christian unity was to see what do we hold in common that we can continue and how can we overcome the things that separate us to eventually one day get all the Christian communities of the world back as one church. You know, as I said, it began in 1908. A lot has happened during all these years. You know, since the Second Vatican Council, we as the Roman Catholic Church have been in dialogue with all the other Christian denominations. And there's what we call the Roman Catholic Episcopal Dialogue, there's a Roman Catholic Lutheran Dialogue, and so forth. Even our former bishop, uh, Bishop Saratelli, he still chairs the dialogue between the Roman Catholic Church and the Baptist Church. And so someday, hopefully, I would love to see it in my lifetime, but who knows, that all the Christian communities will come back together as one church, uh, one Christian church throughout the world. But that's something we work for, that's something we pray for. Looking ahead for the coming weekend and the weeks ahead, lots of things happening. This weekend is the annual winter coat drive. As we mentioned last week in church, items can be dropped off at Rugal Hall on Saturday between 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. and on Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And we'd ask you to bring the items to the side door of Rugal Hall over here. Please do not bring them to the main doors of Rugal Hall on this side of the building, because there will be people here to help you get them out of your car and bring them into the hall. And we'd ask you, please do not drop items off before those designated times. We, you know, it's, it's many times people simply drop it outside the locked door and you don't know what the weather's gonna be, they could be damaged. So please only bring items during the designated times of 4.30 to 6.30 on Saturday and from 7.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. on Sunday. You, know, you can drop them off as you come to church or 
drop them off after church um, when you leave uh, or leaving the parking lot. So again, that's this weekend, the winter clothing drive. Also this coming weekend, at all the masses here at Our Lady of the Valley and Holy Cross, there will be a separate second collection. It is the annual offering for the uh, Fund for Retired Religious. And that's a very important collection we take up each year. Because you know, for many years, most religious communities of men or women in vowed religious communities, they did not pay into Social Security and they did not pay into health care. And all that money had to come out of the community funds, which were really not a lot because many times sisters and religious brothers were not paid to teach or they were not paid a lot. I remember my great aunt, who was a sister of charity of St. Elizabeth Common Station, she spent her entire religious life as a teacher. And she reminded me once, at the height of her teaching career, the sisters were paid a dollar a day. And they didn't even see the dollar. It went to the community. And so many of these communities are now strapped uh, for finances to take care particularly of their retired sisters and their elderly sisters. You know, many of the communities, those sisters who are still working, not only are they supporting themselves, but they're probably supporting at least two or three of the retired sisters of the community. And so that's why this fund for retired religious is so very, very important. All the monies collected throughout the United States are then uh, sent to the different religious communities based upon their need and their size and their number. But also it's good to remind you that this is for those men and women in vowed religious communities. It does not go to diocesan clergy like myself. We diocesan clergy, we do not take a vow of poverty. We get a regular salary, we pay into Social Security, and we pay into health care. So it only goes to those in vowed religious communities. So anything you can do to support this fund this weekend is so greatly, greatly appreciated. Also, this coming weekend, the Knights of Columbus will have uh, tickets available for the Pocketbook Bingo, which takes place um, on uh, January 27th. Uh, tickets will be available, advanced sales this weekend after all the masses, so there'll be a discount if you buy your tickets this weekend as opposed to buying them at the door on January 27th. And one final reminder, particularly for those people who attend daily mass here Monday through Friday at Our Lady of the Valley. You know, we do have a policy that when the schools in Wayne either have a delayed opening or are closed due to inclement weather or road conditions, the nine o'clock mass is canceled. And so you always need to either check the news or even check the Wayne Schools website, which is called wayneschools.com, to find out if they're having a delayed opening or they're closed. You know, this is the first time in three years we've had to actually cancel the morning mass because of the weather, uh, whether our road conditions, whether it was the water or the snow. So I think a lot of people forgot about that. So again, anytime Wayne schools have a delayed opening or a close due to the weather conditions or road conditions, the morning mass here at Our Lady of the Valley is canceled. So enjoy the rest of this day. I'll say enjoy the snow that might be coming tomorrow into Saturday. So, or we'll see you this weekend here at Our Lady of the Valley or at Holy Cross. Have a good day and thanks for listening.